I'm Srini Rao, and this is the Unmistakable Creative Podcast, where you get a window into the stories and insights of the most innovative and creative minds who've started movements, built thriving businesses, written best selling books, and created insanely interesting art. For more, check out our 500 episode archive at unmistakablecreative.com. Hey there, it's Srini. So I know that. I've been talking to you about the Architects of Reality, our national conference for the last several months. And I wanted to let you know that uh, we're at this point probably not going to be able to have the event uh, just because of the sheer number of, of tickets we've sold unless people buy tickets. So the thing is that if you're on the fence and you've been really thinking about it, uh, you know, please at least consider buying a ticket by you know the end of this week. Because if not, we really are at the point where Unfortunately, it's just not going to happen simply because we haven't had enough people buy. If this is something that you guys really want, uh, you know, we would really, really love to give this to you. It's something that we know is incredibly meaningful to us. And at the same time, uh, we have to also be able to fund the event. And based on where we're at right now, there's a good chance that the event will be canceled. So if you've been on the fence, uh, you know, shoot me an email. Let me know uh, if you're thinking about coming. Uh, but if you, if you really are serious, you know, the best thing you could do to help us to make this happen is to buy your ticket before the end of the weekend. I know that a lot of people probably want to wait until the end of January or at the beginning of the year. Uh, but if we aren't able to do that uh, and get more ticket sales, then the event will have to be called off. So visit thearchitectsofreality.com. Uh, hopefully we'll make this happen. And if not, no hard feelings. Hey, everybody, it's Trini. I am here with you for a very special episode, something a little different than what we normally do. Um, we're going to give you a behind the scenes look at something that we have been working on quietly. You've heard us uh, mention it in ads and you know a bunch of other places. Uh, but at this point, it's become a hell of a lot more than that. And that is thanks in part largely to our amazing community manager, Milena, who is actually here with me. Um, to tell you a little bit about what we're doing. How's it going, Melania? Hey, I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good. Uh, it's funny because normally I'm just doing interviews and uh, not really talking about any of this stuff. But uh, you have done, without question, a remarkable job creating a just vibrant community with tons of amazing content. And people seem to be really, really loving it. And um, just you know, to give you all some context, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do right when we raised our first round of funding was to hire a community manager and somebody to help us build out uh, a listener referral program. And when I told Milena this, she said, okay, fine, but we're going to do it in a very different way than you're thinking. And I said, fine, I don't know how to connect the dots. And she's done a hell of a lot more than that. Um, so, you know, some of you heard us mention Cal Newport or heard Cal Newport mentioned the idea of Mighty Networks and how it's different than mainstream social media. And so immediately we thought, OK, let's let's make this sort of the, the, the launch pad. But why don't you describe what it is? I mean, since you're effectively the one that's created it, um, you know, I've given you some of the content, but you really have led the charge on this. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, yes, that episode with Cal Newport was definitely a, a start, a leverage of the thing we have created. Uh, starting from uh, late summer, and it's been going very well, I would say. So uh, it mm -hmm. is our community on Mighty Network. And Mighty Network is a new platform that serves as uh, like a hub for different types of niche uh, communities and small social networks, if you will. Uh, how it, it kind of gathers uh, like-minded people around different causes and different things. So our specific group uh, gathers creative people, creatives of all kinds that are all united around the idea of an unmistakable creative podcast, as well as uh, Srini's writing through his books and blog posts, etc. cetera. So uh, mm -hmm. our idea with this group is to gather these people and help them live better, create more, and, you know, bring their uh, creative projects to life, which we kind of recognize as a big need. <clears throat> yeah. Excuse me. But I think more than that, uh, nowadays, uh, the more than just the purpose of the group that I described concisely is uh, nowadays, I think what we are seeing on the internet is that internet is becoming very saturated, social media is becoming very saturated, all these things are becoming very distracted, distractive. And uh, many times uh, people recognize that uh, 
more often people recognize that there is like a lot of detrimental effects uh, with that information overconsumption and distractions and pings and dings and rings, as you know. And I think mm-hmm. previous era was largely determined by like, you know, selfies and personal brands and like, you know, these huge internet personas, uh, you know, uh, yelling at their megaphones. It's like, oh, look at me, look at my life, look at my cat, look at my, you know, <laughs> I go drink with umbrella. And I think people got tired of that, you know. Nowadays, mm-hmm. I think people, we can see this shift happening where people are kind of trying more to tap into uh smaller groups and kind of connect with like-minded people and uh, kind of have groups of people that will cheer for them and that they will cheer for and that uh, they can learn from and succeed together. And I think uh, Serena's hope in mine was kind of to fill that need uh, in on the internet, if you will, for our own group of creative people. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that the the thing that's been fascinating to me to uh, about the network itself and, and looking at the people who are members in there is just the sheer diversity of people who are in it. You know, we have everybody from data scientists to economists to comic artists. Um, it's just a brilliant group of people. But I think that the other thing that I have found really uh, remarkable is that rather than just being a place where we post status updates or share content from the interviews, you've really taken it. And, you know, as we were saying, you know, in one of our, our weekly meetings, I said, you know, you've turned this into a school for life skills. So like you're effectively taking ideas every month, exploring a theme, giving people exercises, worksheets, co-working sessions. Uh, you know, talk about that. Talk about the sort of the actual um, content. Like what are the benefits of this and why is it different than being in, say, a, a Facebook group? So, yeah, there is many differences. So, first of all, I would like to mention that uh, within Mighty Networks, uh, like the space itself is like, you know, nicely designed, very clean. There is no ads. There is no, you know, promotions and like just things uh, uh, flashing and none of that. So, it's like clean and it's not uh, distracting. But in addition to that, what we are trying to do is... um, that we are trying to kind of provide a structure for our content that we are creating. So just to keep things interesting and uh, something that's provide something that's aligned to the needs and desires of our members. And uh, we are every month, we are exploring different theme together. So some of our previous mm-hmm. themes included deep work, uh, creativity, creativity, we had um, multipotentialism. And now in December, we have very uh, fitting theme, which is uh, reflection and planning. And mm-hmm. um, we'll talk a little more about that later. But um, yeah. I think with that, it kind of uh, gives me um, like more ideas how to create structure, how to uh, provide people with something that's like of high quality that they care about. And then, mm-hmm. and then also for every theme, I'm also creating like custom content that we... For, uh, like mostly don't share anywhere else. So it's just like exclusively for our members. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I I think the the amazing thing is that each month with these themes, you're not just getting content, but you're getting actual action, you know, actionable ideas for how to implement this content into your life. Uh, You know, one of my favorite things when the multi-potentialism month was when you said, okay, find all the common threads between all the things that you like. Um, and I saw that and it was kind of funny because that's how I kind of discovered with you that, you know, deep down I realized I was like, oh, you have a PhD. Like, and I, I remember asking you, did you ever want to teach? And I was like, well, that makes all the sense in the world considering that you're effectively approaching this like you're teaching a class, which is phenomenal. I mean, people are, are learning a ton. Um, people are getting a ton out of it. You've heard, you know, the ads on the show from our listeners themselves. Uh, talking about what they're they're getting out of this, and like Melina said, this isn't you know Facebook where you're going to be distracted by a thousand ads. And you, do we post tools and recommendations in there? Yeah, absolutely. But we have a separate section called the Creative Toolbox where I share all the various tools that I use to do my creative work or things that I discover that I think are cool. Um, I'm also actually starting a new project inside of there. Um, called Bringing a Creative Project to Life, where I'm going to walk you through my own process for um, making my first documentary film because I, you know, I got the new iPhone. Uh, I enrolled in master classes, Ken Burns documentary class. And I thought, well, okay, you know what? I'm going to do this. I might as well share exactly how I'm going to do this with with each of you and show you a behind the scenes look of the process. 
So you can see that it just starts out really messy and chaotic. And, and hopefully, fingers crossed that the end product will actually look um, really cool. But I, I think the, the neat thing about that is to be able to sort of showcase progress. And I'm hoping that I can convince Masterclass to sponsor the podcast and let us do this all year where we tackle a different creative project based on one of their masterclasses or, or a different skill. Like we were joking, Steph Curry apparently has a, a masterclass on how to shoot a basketball. And my friend Matt and I were saying, well, we should take the class. And if we don't make it to the NBA, we should ask for our money back. Um, exactly. Give me, give me the money back. But you get to it's see so how important. stupid I look shooting a basketball. So we might actually do that where, you know, I take the Steph Curry masterclass and, uh, every day I'll share, you know, my poor attempt to, to shoot, uh, at a, probably like at a, a park somewhere. Although we were joking that maybe we'll become the best adult basketball players in, in Boulder, in a, in a Boulder adult league after you never know. Class. You never know. And I think it's so fascinating. Uh, and I, by the way, I love your first video and like everything that you have shared. And I think this is a unique opportunity because like now we are exploring more and more and people get to see like more and more of behind the scenes, more and more of creative process and like to connect with us. And I think that's really very, very interesting and very good. Yeah. And, you know, we're going to start adding, uh, you know, a, a monthly live Q&A with one of our guests, uh, which probably listeners will vote on and then we'll reach out to the guest. And so rather than me asking questions, you'll get to ask the questions um, based on either the monthly theme or whatever it is. Uh, you know, we'll also be doing office hours there soon. So a lot of really, really cool stuff coming. But I think that, you know, we want to spend the rest of our time talking about something that I think is is really relevant to all of you. Um, and that is uh, conducting an annual review. You know, I wrote an extensive blog post about it. And uh, some of you read it if you're you're on our newsletter if you haven't it's on our website um on the the blog section and uh milena took it to a whole other level and took my annual review concept and she created a four-week uh workshop around it we're pretty much done are we in, we're on week two now right we're in week one we're finishing week okay. one right now yeah yes. so, so mm -hmm. go ahead yeah we're finishing week one you created a 22 page workbook that is just for people who are inside of the mining network to go through this process and people are sharing some other really cool resources um to help with this process too like i you know chamek shared that. so i don't know about you but vacuuming is not one of those things that i ever look forward to doing but as you know your environment has a huge impact on your creativity so i still like it to be clean wherever i'm living and working but now it doesn't have to be something that you deal with if you're like me and you grew up in the 80s you probably fantasized about the day when cleaning your house would be like it was for the Jetsons, meaning you don't have to lift a finger. Well, the good news is that we're already kind of living in that future. And the easiest way to make sure your floors are clean every day is with the iRobot Roomba Robot vacuum. It cleans up after itself. The clean base automatic dirt disposal takes convenience to a new level, automatically empties its own bin into an allergen lock bag that holds 60 days of debris and traps 99% of pollen, mold, and dust mites so you can forget about vacuuming for months at a time. Let the Roomba clean for you instead. It learns your home, finds dirt, and empties itself on its own. It's got powerful cleaning performance made effortless. Remember, if it's not from iRobot, it's not a Roomba. To learn more, go to iRobot.com slash unmistakable. That compass thing that you know was there, I was like, wow, this is really cool. I'm actually going to sit down and do this this afternoon. Um, so you know, what you'll see when you go in there is it's not Facebook, it's, you know, incredibly engaged. Um, and we're also in addition to doing the annual review, uh, we're going to do a goal setting and uh, objectives and key results workshop, um, that that's going to be live, but it's only for people who are inside of the money network. But why don't you give us the outline? Malay? I mean, you're the one who effectively created this course, but is a free course on goal yeah. setting and reflection. <laughs> So yeah, it was great because when I mentioned to Srini that I want to do a uh, December monthly theme uh, reflection and planning, he said, hey, I'm actually writing the blog post on the same topic. So it's kind of good that we could circle back and uh, inform each other's work. So kind of what he did inspired me uh, to an extent. And then I, uh, I kind of, uh, as he mentioned, brought it to the next level in a way. Um, so I think for the month of December, I'll just go very quickly of like what is covered uh, there. So uh, in week one, we are kind of mapping our year. And Srini, that's an exercise that you enjoyed uh, as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like a little rabbit hole for you. Uh -huh. um, so yes, it's essentially, Srini and I are playing a lot with mind maps and uh, everything we uh, around everything we come about is like oh this could be a mind map this could be a mind map so that's kind of how we are summarizing uh some of the red content etc and for me it's also like a big part of creative process so common threads workshop also included mind maps so first week mm -hmm. 
about mapping what happened in 2019 in order to uh, kind of reflect a little more in week two. Um, so in week two, we will cover what would, what went great. So some of the mm -hmm. highlights of this year and um, also what were the challenges. And then lastly, lessons learned, because if we don't reflect and kind of uh, try to understand what has actually happened in our lives, we fail to um, adapt and integrate those lessons. And then yeah. week three is a little bit loaded because that's when we come to the nitty gritty. We don't advise mm -hmm. you to set your goals before you reflect on what has happened already. So yeah. um, in that uh, workshop that Srini is mentioning, we are preparing a workshop in which we will, uh, so first, uh, try to uh, identify your uh, quote unquote vital few. So few activities that you are doing that are producing outstanding results, because we don't want to overload you and tell you, oh, you need to do everything. You need to work more. You need to work so much harder. We want to identify what are the key activities that are producing results for you. And then second, um, we want you to identify your five key focus areas or five projects. And that's based on previous unmistakable creative podcast guest, uh, Charlie, uh, Gelke, who wrote a book, um, Start Finishing, and uh, he claims that you can only have five projects at a time. So basically, we are uh, kind of identifying key areas, key five projects in uh, 2019. And mm -hmm. for key areas, we will help you set your goals using OKR system, which is something that we are using behind the scenes. And OKRs uh, can be a little tricky to kind of understand at first. Uh, and take a little effort, a little thought. Uh, but also another component of OKRs is that you need accountability later. So like, as you know, probably setting goal is much easier than actually executing it and mm -hmm. accomplishing it. So we are hoping with this group to provide also that accountability component, if you will. And then lastly, week four, we will have, you know, opening sense of possibilities and then mind mapping, you know, some ideas for 2020, et cetera. So it will be a little more of like on, on creative note, whereas yeah. week three, where we have that workshop is more of technical content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all of this stuff is, uh, you know, access accessible only for people inside of the Mighty Network. Uh, it's completely free to join. It doesn't cost anything uh, for now. And uh, yeah, I think I, I realized this is something I haven't told anybody, but you don't even have to put in your email address. You can actually just log in using your existing Facebook account like you do to every other website. Um, and you'll see, you'll get to meet other listeners. You can find other listeners who are actually living close by to you. So if there's somebody you want to meet in person, you can do that. You know, we hope that more and more um, the Mighty Network will move to the point where it's big enough where you can meet somebody in person if they live close by to you. Uh, but it's been, yeah, we're... we're it really, really just in the last probably two to three weeks has really, really come to life. And uh, it's vibrant. Um, there's a lot going on there. And, um, you know, you heard Roshan talk about the fact that the the content is really different than what you would find on Facebook. And, um, you know, the people there are remarkable. And, and the other thing, I, I, th this to me has always been mind boggling is, like I said, you know, at the beginning, the, the caliber of people in there. Uh, is really, really amazing. I, I, I joke that, you know, this group of people together could potentially, you know, create massive social change and solve big problems. Um, and, you know, while I say, say that jokingly, I, I would love it if that's where eventually we head to the point where there are a thousand of us who could say, for example, fund an education project and get it off the ground. Uh, those yeah, are the kinds of things we want that, to see ultimately. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are the ultimate sort of goals that are really, and, and the other thing is that this is not about our guests. It's not about my brand. It's really about our community. Uh, and, you know, Blaine, can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah. Like you, I know you've done listener profiles, so speak to that a little bit. Yes. I think that's actually my favorite part because, uh, as you will notice, if you join our mighty network is that, uh, out, like as opposed to other Facebook groups you might have belonged to where you are, that are mostly focused like around the host or like whoever is the brand uh, that's being promoted. Uh, we are actually focused on our, on our members. And that's uh, something that we are fostering over and over. And we do that in several ways. So we publish listeners profiles, profile stories. Uh, and these are like long, kind of long format uh, written interviews. And, uh, our um, members are being asked some of the signature unmistakable creative questions, such as what did your parents do for a living and how did that impact your life? 
uh, I don't know, what was your first job and how did that impact your career? And of course, the last question, what do you think that is it is that makes somebody or something unmistakable? So uh, kind of uh, through that, uh, our members get an experience of actually being interviewed at the Unmistakable Creative, which I think is really cool. And like whoever did the profile story said that the whole experience was very enjoyable and introspective. So, so they liked it. And then in addition to that, we have another thing that we are doing every week now um, in alignment with our monthly themes. So every week we are publishing a case study uh, based on our community members. So for instance, in October, our theme was creativity. So we published five stories about five of our members, and then we asked them questions about their creative project, their creative practice, etc. So that way, we kind of got to know them better, see what they're working on, and we're hoping to spark some interesting collaborations from there. And then, for instance, for Multipotentialism Month, uh, we asked them about the, their multiple interests. How do they integrate them uh, in their life? What do they think is a superpower of person with multiple interests, etc.? And now, this month, we are featuring four case studies on uh, reflection of 2019. So we are asking our members, how did their 2019 go? Uh, they're sharing their favorite pictures and uh, their favorite stories and some of their plans for 2020. And I think that all of that has been really nice and fascinating because we are learning so much about our members. Uh, and members are learning a lot about each other. And we're kind of creating a nice and safe creative space where people can share their stories and we really care about their stories. And uh, one more thing I would also like to mention is that uh, a big important feature of Mighty Networks is questions, Q&A. Um, would you oh, agree yeah, with that? Absolutely. I mean, I think that it's been uh, really, I mean, that's been one of the fun, funnest things, like all the questions. And also just seeing, you know, the answers that people are giving us are, some of them are funny, some of them are thoughtful, some of them are interesting. I mean, it's just getting to know all of the people who listen. Um, I think what you'll find is that it's funny because I was trying to think about how, how I would describe this. And, you know, I, I was writing about this idea that my whole life I felt like I don't fit in even, you know, with my own family. Cause I, I jokingly wrote an audience of one that God must've made a sorting error putting me with these people. Um, but you know, <laughs> I, I think that one of my friends had a really interesting observation. He said that, you know, you, it's kind of like you're trying to build Harley Davidson for creative people, you know, but, you know, and Seth Godin said, you know, what Harley, Harley Davidson does isn't sell motorcycles. They basically, you know, take a group of, you know, disconnected outsiders and make them into connected insiders. So I guess that, you know, what we've done is really build a community, I think, in a lot of ways for people who feel like they don't fit in anywhere else. Uh, you know. Yeah, I think that's true. Yes. And I think it's very interesting uh, because then you feel less alone and you mm. feel less weird. Yeah. And I think it's very stimulating because you see that, you know, there are many people who are working on their creative projects on the side. And when you see that, it becomes so much easier to, you know, feel less alone and uh, share your work and showcase your work and uh, show up again and again and just connect with those cool people. Yeah. And yeah, stop wondering where did all the cool people go? Yeah. Because they're at our mighty network. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that makes a, a perfect way to wrap things up. Uh, you know, I think that if you join, you'll see that this isn't, uh, you know, like a Facebook group. One other thing we, we didn't mention this is that we also, you know, finally now have a listener referral program built largely in thanks to Milena with some very cool bonuses, uh, you know, just by referring to new members who, you know, or, or listeners, uh, we actually feature your work in our newsletter, which goes out to thousands of people. So we'll link to your website. We'll share whatever you want us to share. Uh, you know, that's just one of the many perks of being an ambassador. And obviously those perks get better and better as you, uh, as you get more and more people, uh, into the network. Yeah. Because next week we actually have a workshop, uh, which is called art of interviewing with Srini Rao, <laughs> surprise, surprise. And I will get to practice my, um, rudimentary interviewing skills with <laughs> Srini. So <laughs> it's only for the ambassadors. Yeah. So very Exclusive. So yeah, if you are already in the Mighty Network and you're listening to this, you still have maybe some time to become an ambassador. Yeah. And we're going to do a lot more exclusive ambassador content as well. So, oh yeah, yeah, that will be that will become like a little niche group yeah. of our favorite people. So if you're wondering where to find out about the Mighty Network, just go to unmistakablecreative.com/tribe. Like I said, you can use your LinkedIn or Facebook to log in, and um, you will basically be part of the network. And uh, we would love to meet all of you who are listening who have yet to join. Definitely.
Awesome. And we will wrap the show with that. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast. While you were listening, were there any moments you found fascinating, inspiring, instructive, maybe even heartwarming? Can you think of anyone, a friend or a family member who would appreciate this moment? If so, take a second and share today's episode with that one person because good ideas and messages are meant to be shared.